Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. It is episode number seven of the Leeds United career mode. Man, it is hot, man. Seriously, it is so hot. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But um, sometimes, like when, you, <laughs> when you're just sweating at half past ten, you think to yourself, hmm... England needs to get on board with uh, with AC, you know, like, seriously. That's the one thing I think people forget about England is that we don't we don't have AC. What a goal by Christensen here, by the way, 10 minutes in into our uh, episode opener against Brentford. But yeah, people forget this. We don't have AC. Like, we don't really have AC. Unless you're in, like, a, a superstore or, like, a, a shopping mall, shopping mall, shopping centre or whatever, we don't really have AC in this country. Certainly not in our, in our homes. Unless you're privileged enough. So, yeah, it can, it can just get ridiculous at times, man. Seriously. But anyway, um, heading into today's episode. Yeah, first game uh, was against Brentford on the back of our win over Aston Villa. And uh, let's just say this is one of the most bizarre games you will see. So, I scored this incredible goal with Christensen. Absolute thunderbolt from my right back. Then I conceded that ridiculous goal there. Don't even ask me what I was trying to do. He's got no idea. And then in the 90th minute here, I bring out Marek Rodak. He's second best of the ball against Keen Lewis Potter. Rolled back and drilled in from 20 yards with a goal gaping. Had Charlie Creswell backing onto the line, but didn't position myself in the right place. And Thomas Frank's side steal the three points. The two goals I conceded there, I don't know what to tell you. You know, sometimes I make mistakes. We're all human. We all make mistakes, but there's no excuse for that, is there? Do you know what I mean? That, that first goal, I... I, I was holding down, I'll tell you what I was doing for the first goal, I was holding down the triangle button to get Rodak to come out and pick the ball up. Instead, the uh, when, when you're on PlayStation, when you hold down the triangle button, for those who don't play on PlayStation, it signals the goalkeeper to come out and come towards the ball and come off his line or come out of his six-yard area, if you will. Um, but it's also the button for a through ball. So depending on whether the goalkeeper sees it as the ball in his possession or out of possession, it will determine whether he attempts a free ball or runs on to attempt a free ball or just runs and picks the ball up. Unfortunately, that was one of those moments there where the intelligence of the AI didn't really give me much help whatsoever. So that was really poor. Second goal was my fault, though. Storm Marek Grodak out of his area. I'm trying to play with a sweeper a bit more nowadays in FIFA and just got the timing horribly wrong. So, Lee, uh, sorry, we were 2-1 down against Brentford and then uh, <laughs> right from kickoff in stoppage time, Dan James scores the final kick of the game. And this is why, and I know I say it a lot, but this is why, like, seriously, never, and I mean ever, give up on a game, regardless of how many minutes you've played regardless of how many minutes were allocated in stoppage time the amount of late goals in FIFA nowadays is absolutely ludicrous it's been this way since FIFA 20 ever since the switch over to next gen console I've noticed that late goals are so much more frequent than they used to be and stoppage time as we know is a little bit broken sometimes the game goes on for way longer than it should this is why I always say to people if you've conceded in like the 91st minute you might get a chance in the 94th. So don't give up on the play until the final whistle because you just never know. Anyway, drew the game 2-2, but then the following game, Wednesday night, Carabao Cup, quarter final. They're well to reach the last eight, to be fair, but, mate, I got dominated in this game. Burkhouse was just a monster in this game. His second goal was unbelievable, and we got torn apart and lost by three goals to nil. Don't really mind too much, though. It was a nice to get a cup run and go all the way to the last eight, but... We're still firmly focused on the Premier League. And when it comes around in January, the FA Cup as well. Heading into the following game, uh, Leicester City though. Uh, battle of two teams going up. Obviously taking on West Ham there. Um, first of all, I want to say real briefly, in the last episode we were talking about West Ham and uh, winning the Europa Conference League. Today, which is Tuesday, the 13th of June, woke up this morning and saw the news. First of all, Kylian Mbappe, PSG prepared to sell. It's one of those um, those GTA memes. Ah, here we go again. You know, like seriously, Real Madrid, another season when they might get Mbappe in the summer. You never know, this time might be the one. But Declan Rice to Arsenal. Well, let's talk about this very briefly. Firstly, David Moyes going to be staying on at West Ham. Good. I think that's a great decision for both the manager and also the club as well. It's um, like it's a, it's a match made for realists. Do you know what I mean? David Moyes has led him to two really good European adventures. First in the Europa League, reaching the semis, and then this year win that Europa Conference League final as well. Fair play, they're back in the Europa League for next year as well. You know, for West Ham, I feel as though they, they need to be realistic with things. And, you know, can there be a top four team? Maybe one day. But realistically, just keeping themselves in the Europa League or Conference League, that is definitely doable for West Ham. They've got a fantastic stadium. They've got a great record of bringing through academy players and giving young players a chance. They're becoming a more commercial club as well. They've had some real good star players over the years as well. 
But also to battle for a top four place at this current point in the Premier League is going to be a ridiculously tough task for anyone outside of the traditional big six, especially now that Newcastle are part of the mix as well. So I feel as though for West Ham to be giving David Moyes the job um, long term, or at least for the following season, I think that's a really good decision by West Ham. I really do. You see they're halfway through the season now on the back of the draw with Leicester. 21 points on the board. So, if we were to have the exact same second half of the season as we have in the first half, we'd reach 42 points and that would do me just fine. I said our first season in the Premier League. Yeah, I'd love to sneak into the top 10. That's definitely a possibility. We're in 12th right now, but I would simply take just staying up in 15th, 16th, 17th place. So far, so good. But yeah, for, for Moisey, like I really do feel this. So he's done a great job at West Ham. And I know this season there are a lot of Moyes out people in the West Ham camp due to their underperformances in the Premier League. But what came with that was, again, a run to a European final and a major honour as well. I really do feel as though for West Ham, it's the right decision to extend him. And you know, I'm a, you know I'm a David Moyes fan regardless, but I don't think he's done an awful lot wrong with West Ham. I really, really don't. I know this season domestically wasn't ideal, but in the end, they survived comfortably. And getting a trophy as well, I think I think he deserves to stay on. And I think for West Ham fans, they, they should be pretty pleased to know that as well. With all the uncertainty of clubs around them with chopping and changing managers constantly. To have that consistency and to keep a manager in for the long term that knows the club. Don't forget, this is his second stint with West Ham. Don't forget this. He, he stepped away from West Ham and then came back like 12, 18 months later. So I think, I think that's right for West Ham. I really do. But anyway, moving away from Moyes and onto the players here. Declan Rice, I've seen this morning, he might be on his way to Arsenal. And I think the fee is £100 million. You know, I want to talk about this very briefly because, as I tell you what, the goalkeeper mistakes in today's episode. What is going on? Captain Bazuna. What was that? We put him under a press and he picks out Mason Holgate, rubbing his first goal for the club here as he wraps up the win in a 3-1 victory at Ellen Road. But yeah, I think for Declan Rice, I was, I was talking to a friend about this actually last weekend, how a lot of people seem to forget that footballers are real people. You know, they're real people and transfers aren't just about who pays the most amount of money and who's the bigger club. There are so many other factors that go into it. And for me, me and my best friend, like we, we were talking about, um, well, throughout the season, but particularly last season, last summer when there was rumours he'd be leaving, we both agreed on this, that if Chelsea would stay in the Champions League, then Declan Rice would end up going to Chelsea this summer. Like, we, we felt as though if it wasn't going to be last summer, it would be this summer. He would go to Chelsea if they stayed in the Champions League. Chelsea, youth, product, but also as well. What do we need to remember is that Declan Rice is a London boy and he's been in London his entire life. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say that his age right now, in his early 20s, he wouldn't be adverse to leaving and going elsewhere and challenging himself in a new environment. Be it out in Manchester at Manchester United, lots of talk he'd be going there to Old Trafford. And of course, recently we've been seeing a lot of rumours he'd be going to Bayern Munich. What a penalty, by the way, Marcus Rashford here. Nothing I can do about that one there. There'll be lots of talk he'd go to, uh, to the Allianz and join Bayern Munich as well, which, to be fair, I think would fit him like a glove. But Rice is a London boy. He's been in London his entire life, from the Chelsea youth setup to West Ham, and still there now at West Ham. He owes West Ham nothing more now. As the club captain that's led them to that major honour with the conflict, he owes West Ham nothing more now. He's you know not going to be hated if he leaves. No one's going to be disappointed. And if he does go to a London rival like an Arsenal, like a Chelsea, like a Spurs, the West Ham fans they wouldn't hold it against him. I really don't think they would for taking the next step up. But because Spurs this season failed to qualify for a European competition, they won't be considered because West Ham are in Europe next year in the Europa League by winning the Conference League. Spurs wouldn't be considered. Rice would probably stay at West Ham over going to Spurs. What was that, by the way, by Cody Drama? 19 minutes in. Man took a tumble for no reason. But, um, yeah, he wouldn't go to Spurs now. But for, for Arsenal, and uh, sorry, for Chelsea, sorry, because of Chelsea's struggles this year, and the uncertainty around the club. With all the all the crazy new signings they made, just tons and tons of new players coming in. The uncertainty over the club and what's going on in the long-term future. Pochettino's come in. I think he'd do really well working under Mauricio Pochettino. I do believe that. But I feel as though the uncertainty of Chelsea... I don't think now would be the right time. Again, me and my, my friend, who's a Chelsea fan himself, we both agreed that Chelsea was still in the top four. Let's just say hypothetically Thomas Tuchel was there. We, we'd have no doubt he'd move on to Chelsea. But out of those three London clubs there, Arsenal right now look the most stable and secure and long-term going forward with Mikel Arteta. 
as a replacement for Thomas Partey, who's been heavily linked to a room uh, to a to a move to the Serie A. You know, Granit Xhaka is now getting on as well. Declan Rice fits Arsenal like an absolute glove. And for Arsenal, it would either be Moises Caicedo or Declan Rice. That's been the talk right now. But for Arsenal, I think getting a player in that's homegrown, you know, getting a player that's kind of, that comes in that obviously is trained in England. If you watch my FM save now, you know, I'm a bit of a stickler for those, uh, for those regulations. But... I think for Arsenal, that, that fits the club like a glove. I don't think West Ham fans would hold it against him for moving on to Arsenal. And I don't think Declan Rice would uh, would um, would feel as though that would be the case either. So he wouldn't be worried about destroying his legacy at West Ham. I don't think there'd be any hard feelings whatsoever from the Irons fans at all if he goes on to Arsenal. And £100 million is a lot of money, but Declan Rice, to me, is still getting better in his early to mid-20s. And he's such an intelligent player. I mean, he really, really is. I'm a massive fan, and I have been for such a while now. Rice is a, a fantastic, fantastic reader of the game. For his age, that, that kind of the game, that side of the game, that kind of mental awareness, the composure, the positional sense, that normally comes later on in a player's career. They normally excel at that later on in their career when they've played so long and have got such a good feel for the game. Declan Rice has always had that, and technically he's sublime. You know, he's brilliant on the ball, and he's so composed. For such a young man, Declan Rice is so composed. He's got a terrific body, you know, he's six foot one. he holds himself well, he's got a bit of strength, and he's got legs for days as well. What a goal by Ryan Manning, by the way, here from 20 yards out here against Wickham in the, uh, the FA Cup third round. But he's got a tremendous body on him, you know, he's really physically fit. And I, I, think, I think the guy... Being in London his entire life, I think with his wife, he had a kid last year as well, I don't think he'd want to uproot his family, go to a new country, go abroad, possibly even go to, to Manchester, but definitely I think go abroad. And I think for Bayern Munich as well, I think Rice would know that if he was to leave West Ham and go to Bayern Munich, listen, they've won what, 11 Bundesliga in a row now after Dortmund's um, failure on the final day? This, is, it, is it 11? 10 or 11 Bundesliga in a row. You know, year after year, they're going to be competing for the the, the, the DFB Pokal. Um, and let's be honest here, the Champions League as well. Every year, you expect Bayern to be there or thereabouts as a, a Final Four, Final Eight kind of team. Um, obviously, this year, they were torn apart. But, of course, they had the had uh, the drama with the, uh, the Nagelsmann sacking and Thomas Ducal coming in as well. That obviously didn't help at all. But even so, for, for, for Rice, he knows if he goes to Bayern, he's pretty much guaranteed a trophy year after year. There's no doubt about it. I think everyone accepts, really, the Bayern Munich. For them to have a trophy this season, it would need to be an absolute bottle job. It's been over a decade since their last trophy this season. It's been such a long time. So he knows if he guaranteed a trophy in a major on a year after year. But... I think that people forget that Rice, again, is, is you know, Kingston-born, been in London his entire career, just had a kid with his wife. I, I think he'd rather stay in London, personally speaking, because he knows if he goes to Bayern, yes, it's a guaranteed trophy year after year, but it's a total new environment for him. Never been away from London, totally new environment for him. Um, you know, needing to learn a new language, playing in a, a, new, t a new, new league, new country. What a tackle by Mark Gay, by the way. Five minutes to go in this game against Liverpool. Well, we've got a great, a great goalless draw against Klopp's side. But also as well, at Arsenal, if Rice goes into that Arsenal team, he walks straight in. Now, that's no disrespect to Arsenal and the current crowd players they've got. It's one of the best Arsenal teams I've seen in many years now. But I think everyone would admit if Rice goes into Arsenal, he walks straight into that first 11. He's more than good enough to do that. But at Bayern Munich... He's got so much to compete with. He's got Ryan Gravenberch, Conrad Lehmer, uh, Joshua Kimmich, Leon Goretzka, although Kimmich might leave. But even so, I don't think he will leave personally, but even so, he has been linked to Barca. But even so, he's got more competition. And I feel as though, instead of being a, um, you know, a regular at Bayern, but not always one of the first names on the team sheet, learning a new language, learning a new country, first time being out of England, you know, let alone London, I think with a chance to stay in London, move to Arsenal, a side who have got back in the Champions League for next season. We in the Champions League for the first time in his career for next season. Um, you know, there's a genuine chance under Mikel Arteta they can really build something strong. This year, they were the closest threat to Man City, and of course, in the end, did end up losing to Arsenal uh, to, to Man City in the title race. But at one point, there were eight points clear coming towards the end of the season, and they did look very likely to be Premier League winners against all odds at the start of the season. But they definitely have a chance to be competing for top four and stay in top four for the remainder of the years where Mikel Arteta is there. They've got a fantastic crop of young players. Martin Odegaard is just a brilliant leader there at such a young age as well. Rice will add to that strong kind of mentality, being a, a captain himself at West Ham at such an early age as well. Aaron Ramsdale between the six, Bakayo Saka. It's a great young team, Arsenal, a great young manager as well. It's improving all the time. If I'm Declan Rice here, 
I make the decision to go to Arsenal. And I know for a lot of people, they'll be saying, oh, come on, are you serious? Like, seriously, at Bayern Munich is guaranteed a trophy year after year. But again, you've got to factor all of those things in here. And people forget that about football players. They're real players, uh, real people as well. They're humans. It's not a video game, you know? It's not a video game. This is not FIFA career mode in real life. This is a real life, you know? And for Rice, again, being a London boy, having a kid with his missus, getting married, like, I, I, I think personally, it'll be a family decision for Rice, because he's a great character as well, off the pitch too, I, I, I think he, I think he'll, I think he'll stay in London personally, I think he'll stay in London, and for Arsenal fans, I, I really do believe you've got your next DM there, Moises Caicedo could also possibly come in as well, depending on the financial situation, I personally, I think he'll probably go to Manchester United or Chelsea, but even so, for, for Rice, I don't think West Ham fans will hold it against him. And I think that deal is going to go through very quickly. I really do. It, it's Bayern or Arsenal, I think, for Declan Rice. Yes, there's talks about Manchester United with Casemiro there as well. I don't think Rice would want to go in there knowing that Casemiro still got at least, at the very least, in my opinion, such a world-class DM, Casemiro. Well, by the way, what a difference Casemiro made to Manchester United. Do you remember the start of the season? When Casemiro came in and people were saying, oh, why is he downgrading from, from Real Madrid? Why is he going to Manchester United? You know, for all the things he's won at Real Madrid, all the Champions League, La Liga, Copa del Rey, so on and so forth. Um, you know, to go to Manchester United to challenge himself like that, first time in English football as well, working under Eric Ten Hag, what a difference he made to Manchester United. I don't think people realise just how big he was for Manchester United this season. I, I have to say, he... You know, there were question marks over Casemiro coming in because everyone knows he's one of the elite DMs in world football. But his age right now, there were question marks as to whether he will be on the downslope. I think this season he answered those questions and he said, absolutely not. I'm still absolutely elite. What a season he had for Manchester United. But anyway, I think that's one of the reasons why Rice would probably prefer to go to Arsenal than Manchester United. And I think to stay in London, again, with his, with his wife, with his kid, and, uh, and move on to a side who have got such an exciting future, this year being the closest threat to Manchester City, and qualifying for the Champions League as well. Yeah, i I got to say, I can see it happening very, very quickly. I would not be surprised if, come the weekend, or next weekend possibly, Declan Rice is announced as an Arsenal player, and for West Ham to get around 80 to 100 million, whatever it ends up being in the end. It's a, it's a it's a good it's a good move for both clubs. West Ham know they can't keep him forever. You know he's more than good enough to be a Champions League player. He's a baller, Declan Rice. I'm a massive massive fan of the guy. You know, I think it's I think it's good for both clubs. West Ham won't stand in his way. I think didn't David Gold already say that? I think David Gold actually said we're not going to stand in Declan Rice's way. But even so, he's yeah. I, I think I think he's cert to go in this summer window. He owes West Ham nothing more now after all the years there and win that Europe Conference League as well. And I think this team that beat me by two goals to nil is where it'll be in about seven to ten days. Declan Rice, I think he's going to sign for Arsenal for around 80 to £100 million. What a deal it will be as well for us. What a deal for, for for everyone. You know, for Arsenal, they've got a class DM, world-class DM coming in. For, for Rice, he's getting to move up to the Champions League. And, uh, you know, hopefully joining a team, such a young, exciting team, where he's going to continue to learn, continue to grow. And the team are going to continue to get better and continue to win major honours as well. And, you know, for, for West Ham, they're getting a ton of money, absolute ton of money that they can reinvest in this summer window as well. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's going to happen. I really do think Rice is going to join Arsenal. Anyway, so uh, moving on, as you would have seen in the draw for the FA Cup last 16 after making it through, it's Millwall! It's my team! Yes, it's Millwall in the last 16. I'm looking forward to that. But for the following game, on the back of loss to Arsenal, they're aiming to bounce back against Leicester City. Again, battle of the two teams that came up automatically last season. Going to the King Power, this is the game we won the title last season against Leicester City at the King Power by holding them to a 2-2 draw. Coming into this game, no, I, was, I was really dominant in this one. These games where I really play a high press, put the Foxes under so much pressure right from the first whistle. And Calvin Phillips was a monster in this game. He scored goals one and three in a 3-0 victory. Wearing the armband in this team. I don't normally give the armband to a new signing, but because he is a Leeds Academy graduate, I don't mind giving him the armband in this team when I'm not playing Patrick Bamford. But he scored our first and third goals. Matt O'Reilly got the other one as well. And we put the sword to Leicester with a 3 0 victory. And I've got to say now as well, you know, our form has been erratic for practically the entire season so far. But I think now, you're going to see the lead tail in just a moment's time. I, I think we're very close to safety now. I really do think we're very close to safety. And there's, there's no doubt about it. As we approach late February now, if we were to go down, we need to lose practically every single one of our remaining games. We are almost, almost there. The question is. Can we get a Wembley appearance to go alongside Premier League safety as well and complete a dream return to the Premier League? Well, heading into the quarter, sorry, to the last 16 even, 
Championship, Millwall, my guys coming to. I got, I got to stop saying my guys, man. I don't think it's right anymore. I feel so. Do you know what I mean? I feel like. I feel like. I, I, do you know? What? I'm going to talk about this in another episode. Actually. I'm going to talk about this in another episode. They are. They are my team in the sense that I support them. But I have a. I have a thing about this. I have a thing about people to say. You know, my team. You know, I, I. I. I don't know. I have a thing about this. But I'll talk about this in another episode. I'll talk about this in another episode. But anyway, um, taking on Millwall, regardless. Challenge tie. Coming to Ellen Road here. We took the lead through Christensen. This guy is turning into a goal scorer, man. Belting one in from close range, and then Jake Cooper. Uh, tall Jake Cooper, six foot six, six foot seven, the former Reading man, makes it one one. The Lions are back on double terms. Thankfully, their equaliser was cancelled out instantly. Patrick Bamford right after the restart makes it two one, and we are back in front. I was really struggling defensively in this game. I had a very strong lineup out there. Really, really good team. But Millwall kept on coming forward, carving me open, getting chances and taking them as well. Zion Fleming makes it 2 2. For the second time in the game, they've come back from a goal down to level it. But with nine minutes to go, George Long's poor kick is intercepted by Dan James. Lovely pass to Brendan Arrington. What a great free ball to find Matt O'Reilly in space from 12 yards out. He's been, I would say, my favourite signing of this save so far. Matt O'Reilly, the former. Celtic, MK Dons and Fulham man gets the goal that would end Millwall's comeback. Yep, twice they came back from a goal down to get themselves on their turns, but that goal there from Matt O'Reilly killed it. The goalkeeping distribution in this game, in this episode, by the way, I've got no idea why it's been so bad for me and the AI as well. It's poor from George Long, they're all forgiven. Anyway, won the game, thoroughly deserved it as well. Millwall only really had the two chance and they scored from it as well. We definitely deserved a win and we got it as well. And in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, we'll be taking on Arsenal. Yep, Arsenal away at the Emirates Stadium. Newcastle versus Accrington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. Um, so still Accrington Stanley and Exeter City still in it. In fact, there's three football league sides with Watford as well. There are three football league sides in the last state of the FA Cup. Unfortunately, we drew on one of the favourites away. Arsenal at the Emirates. If we are to make it through to the semi-finals and get to Wembley, we'll have to pull off a good, a good shot there away in North London. So far this season, we've lost back-to-back -back at the Emirates and also at Ellen Road the league as well. So penultimate game uh, of today's episode, uh, taking on, uh, sorry, second of three uh, final games here, Fulham away, Craven Cottage, going to London for this game here, aiming to get ourselves three straight wins in all competitions, heading into the game, Fulham having the first chance of the game, Woodwork, Rattled and Christensen, mate, he's been so big for me, honestly, like for all the players that have stayed here, Christensen has probably been the, the most important one for me, and Patrick Bamford, to be fair, and Dan James as well, and to, to be a too, so it's quite a lot, actually, but even so, he's been so good for me, Christensen, great block there, keeps it no 0 and then Brandon Williams gets his first goal for the gloves, he's joining from Manchester United at the start of last season, he makes it 1-0, and our versatile fullback gets us in front of Craven Cottage, and then after the restart here, what a ball by Matt O'Reilly to find Jorginho Ruta, one-on-one -on -one with sexy Paolo Gazaniga, for those that have been on my channel for a while, you'll get that reference, but yeah, Gazaniga, uh, rounded, put on the floor, and uh, yeah, great finish by Rutter on the one-on-one -on -one there, the composure, I love going around a goalkeeper, man, I love it, it's so fun to do, it really is, as we put the Argentine on the floor, and put it into the back of the net, so 2-0, the final score, three straight wins in all competitions, Leeds clicking, finally, for the first time in a while, going into great form, at the right time, following game, FA Cup, quarter-final, and could we reach Wembley for the first time in the save? Well, if we're going to do it, it would have to be Arsenal for the first time in the save, go to the Emirates and pick up a shock win in North London. Four minutes in, we consider the penalty. Dived in with Mark Gay, and you know, initially I thought he got the ball here, but actually I saw it on the replay. Martin Odegaard, this is really intelligent from Odegaard. Knocks the ball on. He's not. He's not trying to knock the ball on to shoot. He doesn't care where the ball ends up. As long as he gets the ball away from Mark Gay initially his contact, it's a penalty. It doesn't matter where the ball goes. It's gone out of play. It doesn't matter. He's been taken down, and therefore it's a penalty. Spot kick for Arsenal. But Mikayo Saka is denied from 12 yards. Yep, Marek Rodak guesses correctly, feeling like Gigi Donnarumma in the Euros, denying Saka, and it's still 0-0. Unfortunately, as you see in the top left here, as Odegaard's through, um, I was getting absolutely dominated in the first half. Arsenal, so far, have been a team I've got no answer to in this save. We took them on in North London, the Emirates, and we lost 2-1. We took them on Ellen Road earlier in this episode, actually, and we lost 2-0. 
Their team, even without Declan Rice, is just so, so good. Odegaard with the opener, Norwegian, fires Arsenal in front. Jesus makes it two before the break, and in the second half, it was 25 minutes to go, and at this point, I kind of just thought, yeah, we ain't getting back in this game. So I took the stars off. I really didn't feel any chance of getting back in this one here. I was getting dominated. You know, I say this all the time, I represent the highlights package very fairly. If there's been a game where I've been unlucky... I'll, I'll give myself credit. We've been unlucky, and I'll show you we've been unlucky. If there's been a game where I've been dominated, I won't try and dress it up any other way. I'm not going to sit here and say that this 4-0 score I was deceptive. It wasn't. It should have been more. I was all over the place. Gabriel Jesus was just tearing me open time after time after time again. He got a hat-trick, and then in the 89th minute, Bukayo Saka said, I can't finish from 12, but I can from 18 with the weaker right foot. Yeah, make some ends after missing the pen early on. Although, of course, by this point, the game was already over. Three for Jesus and the match ball. One for Saka and one for Odegaard. And there it is. Arsenal 5, Leeds 0. Lovely winning run from Leeds. Ended there in humiliating fashion. So we're out. We're out of the FA Cup. And we will not reach Wembley for the first time in the save. Great run, to be fair, though. Getting to the quarterfinals. But unfortunately, we will go no further. But for the final game of today's episode here, taking on Nottingham Forest. Heading into the game, 33 points on the board with 11 games to go. Safety is almost in the bag. We know that 40 points is the magic marker, but really nowadays, that's, that's what everyone says. Get the 40 points, you'll be fine. But really now, I think 37, 36, 37 is enough. So really, I'd say one win and maybe a draw or two, and we'll definitely be safe with 11 games to go. So taking on Nottingham Forest here at Ellen Road, aiming to bounce back here. I was not going to end my FIFA session on the back of that loss to Arsenal. We would indeed get ourselves one point of what would be, well, mathematically seven to all but guarantee safety, but really, I think we only need another three or four after this one. Yep, a draw against Nottingham Forest. Not a great result. Morgan gives white What a signing he was, by the way, for Steve Cooper this year and Nottingham Forest. But Ritter's equaliser means with 10 games to go. We've got a game in hand in practically everyone. 34 points on the board with seven clear of Leicester with a far better goal range as well and two games in hand too. I'd say realistically, whilst two wins are practically mathematically guarantee it, one win and maybe a draw and we are there. But that was this episode of the Leeds United Cribber Guys, big fan, watch, hope you enjoyed it. If you had then please drop a like, so you'll have a fantastic day. Tell you what, by the way, just leave me a comment. Just put Bayern or Arsenal. Bayern or Arsenal, depending on who you think is going to sign. We don't need to say, I think he's going to go here because of X, but you can just put Bayern Munich or you can comment Arsenal if you think he's going one of those two teams and let me know why. Or someone else, let me know. Maybe Chelsea, you never know. Have a great day, much love, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.